Hello, today I'm going to be talking about six common Squarespace issues, plus some really simple fixes. These are issues that can only be fixed usually with a little bit of code, but I'm going to show you some simple code snippets and exactly how to use them to make your website do exactly what you want it to do. So let's get started. The first one is that there is an issue with image sizing on mobile. So let's just take a look at this. If I use this little toggle that they have in 7.1 to take a look at what my site will look like on mobile, you can see it. it this image is huge. Like it's absolutely ginormous. So today we're going to be working a lot in the design panel. So we're going to go into design here and go into custom CSS. We're going to do a lot of work in here today. You can ignore all of my other CSS from other plugins and things I use on my site. And then go to the blog post and you can see where I have some custom code snippets for you. The first thing is super easy to fix. Literally just copy and paste, copy and paste this and paste it a couple of lines below any other custom code you have. I'm just gonna tidy this up. And now you can see that that image I'm just gonna take that out again so you can see. That image goes from being your full entire screen to being about 80% of your screen. And you can make that even smaller if you want. So I could say 70% of the screen. Now note that this code changes image sizes on mobile across your entire website. So I like to keep mine at 80 so that they take up a good chunk of the screen, but there's still some breathing room and it's not just loud and in your face. So that's thing number one. Let's go to thing number two, matching button sizes. So if you have a row of buttons, maybe for a social media landing page, or maybe um, a list of resources or something like that, and you want them all to line up, or in my case, it's for my blog sidebar. So you can see over here, I have all of these buttons and I want them all to be the same size, no matter what's inside of them. So one thing you can do for that there's a couple different ways you can go about it, but today we're going to be using some code here. So I've got the code for you and you can just go ahead and copy and paste it. And again, you could put it in your CSS file for your entire website, but that will change some this on your entire website. And I don't want every single button on my website to be that size. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to the page for this. And I've got this, this is my sandbox page where I do my teaching and under the page settings. So again, I'll do that. You just go to the little gear here and then go to advanced and I can go ahead and paste that code in. And there's some extra spacing that Squarespace has created for me, but and that's all I need to do is put that style tag here. So I'll tidy up those in the blog post for you all to make sure they look just right. But then once I hit save here, they still won't match. And that's because as you can see in the code, it says for large buttons. And so you can change this to say medium buttons. You can change it to say small buttons. I'm going to change this to medium here and you'll see that those now all take up a certain portion of the page. The other way I could have done that is by changing the button size. So in the edit, I could have made these into large buttons and it would have worked the same way. Um, it really just matter, changes the padding inside the button. The other thing I want to say about this really quick is you can see that I have these set up to stretch across a really good chunk of the page. And that's because I want them to look, take up almost the entire page on mobile as well. Now, granted, if I wanted to, I could make this 55% of the page. There we go. So that's only taking up 55% of the page now. And on mobile, then they again would only take up 55% of the page. So bear in mind how that works. All right, so that's thing number two, all sorted. Thing number three is ugly contact forms. Like this is not the worst contact form, but it's really not that nice looking, right? And it's definitely not really branded to my business or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this code that says designing forms. And we're going to go back into our design panel and put it this custom CSS. So we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom here. I'm going to make a cup and then, oh, it says, I'm 
missing a closing bracket. So let's add that. There we go. And you can see that this has now made things very purple. And I want to explain a couple things to you. Um, the first is what the, how, kind of how this works. So you can see it's choosing all the fields for the form. And you can see that we can set a border if we want around these things. I don't really want one, but you could set one similar to how we have the border bottom. So I've got a three point line. I can change the thickness of that line. I could say I want it to be 10. I could say I want it to be one. Um, I really like about three and I've said it's solid. Then to say that color, so to make this branded to my business, I'm gonna use the hex code. You can find these by using a color picker on the internet, or maybe you have them in Canva. Um, so mine I have memorized. And so I'm gonna go ahead and change all of those to my brand color. Then to make these transparent color here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to a color picker um, and take my color. So I'm gonna pop in my brand color, 51182B. And then you can see here we have the HSL colors. So if I wanted to, these are the color codes for my, my color, but then this here is the transparency, this last one, A. So if I want it to be really dark, if I want it to be really light, and I can go ahead and do a lot of customizing around that. So that's a really nice way to do it, to, to make it so that when people type over it, they can see. Um, or like I, you can see that this then goes and fills in the inside and it's just white anyway when they click in. So, but you can still see there's a really nice branded bottom line. So sometimes I actually take out the background entirely and just have it look like this. And that looks really nice as well. And people can type in and it's all very great. So it's a little more on brand. All right, so that's number three. Let's hit save here. Number four is embedding newsletter forms from outside providers. So maybe you use ConvertKit or Flowdesk or MailerLite or any of those competitors that aren't MailChimp or Squarespace's emails because those are what work with Squarespace's native newsletter blocks. It's really easy to use any other platform. So I'm gonna show you how in what I use, which is Flowdesk. So you can go ahead and, and however your system works, create a new form, and once you get done, I'm gonna click into one of mine here that I already have, but you can go ahead and edit it and design it to your heart's content. So, you know, in mine, I can create, change the words, the colors, the background, however you want it to look, change the fonts and make sure the form does exactly what you want it to do. And then there'll be a place somewhere that says how to embed it. And in my blog post, I've given you links for exactly how this works in ConvertKit Flowdesk and MailerLite, so they'll tell you where to get these links. And Flowdesk, when you get done customizing everything, they'll give you this information. So the first thing you'll need is this inline code. And so we're gonna go ahead and copy that. And in the sandbox here that we have, I'm gonna go ahead and add a code block. So you have the code block. I'm gonna paste that. It won't do much anything. And when you're in the edit mode, it always says script disabled. Now we're gonna hit save and then it says here in our instructions that we need to add this to the website head tag, like header. Um, so we're gonna copy that code and we will go back, back into settings, advanced, code injection. And we're gonna put that in the, the header here. Now you can see I already have this in mine. I already have this code here, but typically you would add that code in your heading. So. Um, and that's all you would do. And then the newsletter form will be embedded here. If I didn't have that code in to show you, if I hadn't put it in yet, and hit save, that newsletter won't show up. And it actually, I've temporarily probably removed every newsletter um, form across my site. So going ahead really quick and just putting that back in and making it so that my newsletters can show up because it's essentially telling Squarespace to pull data from your newsletter provider. So this is telling it like, hey, go check out Flowdesk to find this form. 
So that's how you can do that. It's really easy. You just use inline form, uh, inline code blocks and add a little bit of code to your header injection. And so I've, like I said, I've provided some exact links in the blog post here to how to do it with MailerLite, Flowdesk, and ConvertKit. The next thing I want to talk about is that search bars. In Squarespace, they give you exactly two options for a search bar. You get dark themed or light themed. And so obviously if I had this section, oops, if I had this as a section of my website that I was using maybe my burgundy on, then I would want the light one, but it still is really hard to read, right? It's not super clear about what it is or what it does. And then even when you have the, let's go back to light here. And even when you're in the darker theme on a light background, it's still really not that dark, right? So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can tidy that up. I'm going to go ahead and use this code that I provided you. And we're going to go back to our trusty place, the design panel. So we're going to go to design custom CSS. I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to go ahead and put that code here. Now you can see I've already designed this to how I want it to look, but here I want to show you a little bit about how this works. So this says you can read background color. So I've put in a gray color, a nice gray color here. If I removed that, I could, I could change this to my other code 51182B and that would make it all burgundy. Oh, sorry. That's the search input. So that's the typing. So the typing color now is that color. Um, I could make it so just that the other stuff here, so is the same. So I'm going to copy this code here so I don't lose it. So I can put it all back the way I like it, but I'm going to go ahead and I can say, maybe I want this to be, oops. And that turns the whole background of everything into burgundy. So maybe I want that to be burgundy, but I want the input to be white. So let's take a look at how to do that to change the typing color, the font color, then I can do that down here. So I can say, I want, if I want a burgundy search bar box, but I want my font to be white, then I can do that up here. But I need one more F. There we go. And that's turned white. So hex codes are always six digits, which is why it's called a hex code. So make sure that if you're using white, which is a lot of Fs or black, which is a lot of zeros that you've got the right number. The other thing, if I wanted to do this, is you can see there's all sorts of other things around changing the colors of the borders and other things like that. But if I was going to stick with this really dark color, I would want to then go in, as we talked about, and make this the light version of this because that will change the little icon on the left into a much nicer, more readable white. And so. And then just have a notice around the other things. You can change lots of these colors. You can see that this, the search preview is in black. So um, that's all the zeros there. You can see that the border is burgundy. I might make that to white just so you can see it here for a second. You can do lots of changing of different colors in different places. So make sure that you just kind of have a play around, but really only change the colors. Now, the way I like it, you can see there's a little white border here. I like mine to be just like what I have in this code here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop mine back to what I have originally so that in the places that I have search bars on my site, it looks just the way I like it, which you can see I have a burgundy thing here. I have the search, but the background that's in search. And when people search, start searching, if I were to say um, Squarespace, Interesting. There we go. It's thinking all the stuff down here pops up and you can see that all of it's in black for the, this, but you can actually change the colors to these. So maybe I will, maybe I'll save search result one search results should be in five, one, one, eight, two B. And 
that will change once I hit save here. Um, and then coming back, our very last thing I want to talk about, so I'm going to hit save here. The very last thing that I want to talk about is that in Squarespace, in 7.0 and in some of the templates and in all templates in 7.1, there is no natural way to have a blog sidebar. And you can see here on my website, I have a blog sidebar and I've had to put this in with some custom code. Um, otherwise, my blog would just ha be just the blog. And I think this is really important, especially around, especially on this homepage of my blog, right? Where I have all this stuff and it scrolls on, but it helps people to be able to find my pages, right? So this is that search bar that I designed that we've just gone over and those buttons we've just gone over. And so people can find the things they need to find more quickly and be, and see more of what my website has to offer on this little search bar. So the last thing I want to say about that is I actually purchased this plugin from Squarespace themes here. And so Amari is great. He's brilliant. And I've actually had a couple small issues in the past with this, but like teeny tiny ones. And he has fixed them like super promptly. He's got great customer service. So I paid for the commercial license so that I can put this on my client's websites as well. But the standard license is really affordable and it makes it really easy if you are looking to put a sidebar on your blog, on your podcast website, or on your, um, maybe your shop or something. It can be used in a lot of different ways. So that's it for me today. If you have any questions, let me know.